Hi, I'm Mark Holthy, Canadian immigration lawyer. And in this video, I'm gonna share some essential tips on those dreaded express entry language tests. Those of you who are applying for express entry know that there is nothing more important than getting high, high scores on your express entry language test. There are multiple tests out there. There's the IELTS, there's the CELPIP, there's the French language test. Well, which test should I book? That's a question I get all the time. Well, the short answer is there's nothing stopping you from using multiple tests with multiple organizations and then choosing the best one for you. So what do I mean by that? Sometimes people in Canada will choose to do the CELPIP test because it's the Canadian English language test. Whereas the IELTS is the international kind of British, you know, Australian version. And sometimes the terminology, if you've learned your English in Canada, is a little bit off. For example, what's a flat? Well, a flat in Canada could be the tire on your car that's got a puncture that's no longer filled. It's empty. It's flat. Well, if you're in England and the question says or asks you to describe something about a flat, well, that could be an apartment, right? A place where you live. So there are subtle, uh, you know, subtle things that come into play when you're deciding which language test to do. But generally speaking, where you live, there may be, if you're outside of Canada, only the IELTS offering. So that's what you're going to do. If you're inside Canada, you have a CELPIP and the IELTS. And I guess I should say there are some locations outside Canada where you can do both. Also, French is becoming more and more important. The points that are attributed to French can really be game changers when people are getting ready for the July express entry draws that are coming up. At least we're all anxiously waiting for them. So you're going to do a shotgun approach. You're going to scatter every possible option that you have out there and then see, reel in which ones you think are going to be best for you. Let's start with the IELTS. When you're writing the IELTS test, if you're outside of Canada, you absolutely 100% need to be hitting a CLB 9. What is the Canadian language benchmark 9? Well, it's an 8 in listening and a 7 in the other four abilities. Reading, speaking, uh, writing. And writing is often really tricky. So many times you'll hit 6.5 and I've seen people have to write it over and over again to get that 7. But you really need 8 in listening and 7 in all the other abilities for the IELTS or you're just not going to score high enough. Now, for those who are inside Canada or have other experience, uh, maybe work experience, Canadian education, or maybe even speak French, the key is really, if you're writing the CELPIP, um, once again, it's nine across the board. So the CELPIP is designed to be Canadian language benchmark straight across. So whatever your score is on an ability, it is the CLB equivalent. So although for the IELTS, it's eight, 777 for the CELPIP, it's nine across the board. So focus on that. Another question that I get from people as we shift gears is how many times can I take the language test? Well, in short, language tests are valid for at least two years. So something to take into consideration is that uh, you don't want to try to submit a language test that's expired. So sometimes people took the test over two years ago and did really, really well. And then they've tried to redo it and haven't done as good. Well, you want to use the score that's the highest, but if it's over two years, it's ineligible. You can't use it. So keep that in mind. But aside from that, you can take the test as many times as it takes to get that CLB9. And remember, that's the very bare minimum as far as I'm concerned, especially for you outlanders. So if you're taking the test, you're going to shoot for that. And if you don't get it at the first time, if you first don't succeed, as we say, Try and try again. Now, the problem is it costs money, yes, but you absolutely need to score as, as high as you can. Well, let's say you scored a CLB 9 and you're trying to get it just a little bit higher and you end up doing a little bit lower on your next one. That's okay. In your Express Entry Profile, you're going to submit the one that scores the highest for you and you're going to make darn sure that the reference number you're attributing to that language score is properly linked in your profile so that you're pulling up the information for the correct one, not the one that's a little bit lower. All right. So yes, you can take it as many times as you want. 
and you're always going to use the one that gives you the highest score. Next question, can you mix and match? Is it possible for Express Entry to say, well, I did better in writing on this one than reading, and then on the other one, I did better in reading than writing. Can I like combine them together? No. When you're uploading information into the Express Entry profile at the beginning, it can only list one language test, and the number specifically does not allow you to put in, well, more than one reference number. So those at the start are the essential kind of things I wanted you guys to, to understand. But at the end of the day, please know that if your language scores are low, it is one area that you have control over. If you've only done a bachelor's, well, you can go back and do a master's. Mm -hmm, you can, which would increase your score. But it's at least one year or two more years that you have to work through it. What if you have a birthday? Then as your education goes up, your, your age points will go down. So language, however, depending on how fast you can learn it, how fast you can improve it, is entirely on your shoulders. So it's the one thing that has the greatest ability for you to influence it. You really can't control your work history. I guess you could keep working to get more work history, but it's not like once you get three years of work history, foreign work history, you can work for another year and then get more points. You're kind of capped out at three. Now there are subject, that's subject to exceptions, but what I'm trying to say is that although language tests can be very discouraging, it's something you have the most control over. So rock it, you guys. Just give it your best, knock it out of the park, and you will give your, your, yourself a really, really good chance at getting your Express Entry profile selected in one of those magical July draws. All right. This is Mark Holthy, Canadian immigration lawyer. And I want to remind you guys, as always, as we've done in a number of these videos, that starting June 1st, the Express Entry course is opening up again. Subscribe. And then at the end of June, I'm going to have four hours, four straight days of one hour masterclasses with yours truly, where I'll answer any questions you have. So good luck and may Express Entry be with you. Take care.